Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Jason Medlock. Jason is a quantum healing hypnosis practitioner, mindset performance coach, remote viewer, and author of Empowered by Consciousness. With a profound understanding of human potential and a passion for empowering others, Jason has dedicated his career to helping people become exceptional leaders capable of achieving their goals with confidence. He encourages others to find their spiritual path by unlocking their potential and creating a fulfilling life. Welcome, Jason. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you, Tanya. I'm very appreciative to be here and I'm happy uh, to, to, to really work uh, with you. And also, I love empaths. Uh, you know, I, I love people who can feel and who uh, have the, the awareness of others. And it's just, it's fabulous, you know, all <laughs> the different modalities out there. So thank you for yeah. having me on. I, I'm getting goosebumps. I feel you. I'm an empath, Jason. <laughs> yes. You. So we're going to have a really fun show today. I feel like the theme this week is tuning into our inner abilities. So you and I, we're going to talk about developing our inner abilities by making the unknown known. And so, mm -hmm. you know, many people think that being superhuman is out of reach or a fantasy. But as we begin to delve into the subconscious mind and the quantum field to empower ourselves through consciousness, we begin to realize that we are a lot more than what we have been taught. And so... Jason, you have always been fascinated by the unknown, and I have too, ever since I was a child. And so yeah. I'd love for you to start off with your story and uh, sharing when you realized that you actually had these inner abilities and what those abilities are. I'll scoot through it, but at nine years old, I was asking questions to my mom, to my sister, uh, what's in the skies? You know, what is the, what are all those shiny objects? And my sister would say, uh, those are stars and we're on planet Earth. I'm like, well, how do you know? <laughs> and, you know, just the curiosity from uh, then on, you know, just wondering, uh, mom, who is God? Uh, where is he? I, we all pray to him. I'm in church playing with toys, uh, just just having a good old time as a young boy. But. I got up, I prayed, I sat down, I got up, I sat down, I followed the entire routine of the Methodist church. And I was still wondering, well, where was he? And just the, you know, just the, the, the fact that, you know, it was night, it was day, it was hot, the sun, the moon, those things really, really, as a young boy, they made me realize that we're not alone. And they made me realize that it was something more to just getting up, going to Sunday school, going to church praising God, which I, I praise God, but it, it was just something different. So I, I always knew I dreamed of being on other planets. I dreamed of being uh, in different galactic wars and, you know, wow. playing with my toys. And, and as I got older, when I got to college, my sister gave me something to help me uh, focus more in school. And she gave me the affirmation of faith. And I was saying this affirmation every day, every day, every day. And before you know it, I was doing great in school. I set a school record in tackles. I was in, I was playing football in college. Things were just going good. And I'm like, man, this, this stuff works. But little did I realize that was a form of metaphysics. That was a form of, of using uh, manifestation tools. But I still didn't quite get it. But I knew that I had the ability to manifest. And then lo and behold, years down the line, I came in contact with the secret. And I think that we all did. Yes. Yes. I um, think that, that was a huge awakening for me was the secret. That, that was so huge, Sonia. To, 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 the secret was, wow, the vision board, uh, uh, law of attraction, you know, just using these things. I started using the vision board and I'm like, man, the things that I'm saying that I want and I'm envisioning, I'm getting them. <laughs> how, how is that even possible? So I start to realize again, oh, I can do what I want to do as long as I say it a whole lot of times. And this is my mindset back then. Uh -huh. I just say it a lot of times and I just keep, you know, looking at it and visualizing it. And it all came together, COVID-19. 
it just came together. It gave me a time to unconnect from this busy world, this uh, hustle and bustle that we're all connected to. And it gave me a, t the, a time uh, to go within myself. My first experience with trying to learn how to meditate, when I meditated and I start to really get good at it, you know, prana breath, all the different uh, 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 kalapate breath, uh, all the different uh, fire breath, all the different breath techniques that moves your consciousness into different realms. And that's when I was, I started to like feel things. I never was a audible, clear audience. Clear yeah. But I always, I, I felt, I never Lucky told you. people. <laughs> You know what I mean? I never told I people, oh, I, I saw something. Oh, I no, no, no. I, I'm not a seer. My I feel it and it and, and, and it comes, my feelings comes in the form of images and pictures. Oh. And I started to see pictures and I'm like, oh, I I I I'm onto something. I have some sort of something, ability, gift. I, you know, I wasn't sure. And I started to then, like all of us find a spiritual teacher, uh, find a guru. And then I realized that the capabilities I had, they were endless, just like we are. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really neat. So, you know, I love interviewing different guests and seeing what their intuitive abilities are, because we all, you know, kind of perceive things very differently, right? And so, I have a, I have a few questions. What is the affirmation of faith? I've never heard of that before. And I heard that in your previous video. Can you talk a little bit about that? The affirmation of faith was, you know, simply, uh, Oh Lord, we thank you for this day. Grant us guidance as we pray, give us strength, hand and heart, you know, just, just a daily routine of, of telling God exactly, you know, what you want out of life. And it was an affirmation when you could also call it, you know, manifesting, you know, I, I want a new car. I want, I want to do, be better as a husband. Uh, I am uh, uh, abundant. I am light. So I, the affirmation was just simply uh, these commands that I was telling God what I wanted and who I was. And so like that, programming sort of, your subconscious mind in the process. At, at an early age in college, not knowing what it was, was just doing what my sister told me. <laughs> and it was more so she was like, you need to, you know, talk, uh, speak to God and hear some affirmations that you need to say to God every day. And she called them the affirmation of faith. That's neat. That's really neat. I love yeah. that. And it's neat that you had your sister there to kind of guide you along that path. And so, you know, Jason, why do you think we have a difficult time understanding our abilities? I know it took me a while to uh, I had turned off my clear audience as a child. I, my friends remember me holding my ears and saying, it's too loud. It's too loud. And I think I turned the volume down after third grade is when yeah. I did that. <laughs> and then as time went on, I've noticed, you know, you like you said, I have, you haven't tuned into that. Well, I hear in different dimensions and different realms. And so why do you think we have a hard time understanding that we all have these abilities inside it, of us? It, you know, great question. It's because of our current construct. It's a, because of the reality that is surrounding us. Uh, it's because of the emotionless women and the emotionless men. It's because we were raised to be tough and you better not cry. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, you don't do this with boys and you do X, Y, Z. It's the structure of our society that shuts us off from our natural abilities. The natural abilities to feel, to hear, to smell, to touch. And those are all the senses that who use? Psychics. Yes. That's how they find people. And empaths. They'll mm -hmm. find empathic people. They'll find a cloth. And I, she went, she, she's located in this direction or they'll get a scent. Our senses, our abilities, our emotions are limited. We're limited and that's why it's hard for us to understand our capabilities. And I'm glad you asked me that because I started to allow myself to really, really be sensitive, allow myself to feel. And as I was, as I continued to meditate, it, it allowed me to just relax and open up. And the abilities that we possess from within, they will come to you. Audience, whoever's listening, just you, you have to let your guard down. You have to uh, decompress from the outside and all the hustle and bustle and all the noise. And then you really, really need to spend more time with yourself 
it will continue to be difficult if you aren't in tune with who you are and just the feeling you have of being within yourself. Yeah. And that's so true, Jason. I think, yeah. you know, that learning how to disconnect to reconnect, right? So, yes. you know, I worked in healthcare for nearly 20 years and it was loud. Trauma centers are loud, lots of buzzing, lots of talking, yelling sometimes. And so I think very similar to you, once I, sh I, I pulled out of that and I started to meditate and spend more time in silence is when my clear audience really started to kick in. And I think it it was always there. It just was kind of, um, I was being distracted by all these other things going on. And, uh, you know, I want to talk about dimensions and I want to talk about some of this Love fun it. stuff that, you know, Jason, you're a quantum healing practitioner and a remote viewer. And so am I, and it's very rare that I've met someone who does both, you know, and I have a really fun time, uh, working in those different realms, those different dimensions, those different timelines, so to speak. And so we're regularly working in the quantum field field. And Jason, how do we utilize that energy from those different dimensions, those different realms to help us heal, uh, you know, multidimensionally, so to speak, which would be mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually? Well, let, let, let's, I, I'm also a level three galactic energy healer. Oh, I and didn't know that. Cool. You're like, okay, so <laughs> do what don't you do? Okay. Well, let's talk about galactic energy healing and let's talk about Reiki energy healing yeah. and Reiki energy is the natural energy beams that are coming from the uh, coming beamed into the earth and these Reiki masters they tap into this and they use the healing over your body and they use their hands to in the heat and they're able to find closed chakras and they're able to open up these chakras so that, so that everything's turning galactic energy healing is channeling multi-dimensional beings and channeling healing patterns. So when you say utilize energy uh, from different dimensions, in one aspect as a galactic energy healer, I channel different energy healing patterns because we use medicine and we use technology and you know uh, uh, heart uh, fibrillators and all kinds of things to help us. But as you evolve and as technology and intelligence involved in different dimensions, they use healing patterns, koku ray, you know, drawing patterns yes. and symbols and then pushing them to, uh, to your patient. So that's one way to utilize different uh, energy uh, from different dimensions. It helps us heal uh, emotionally, physically, and mentally. However, quantum healing hypnosis. Um, Julia Cannon, uh, she taught me um, obviously Dolores, Dolores is, is passed, well, passed yeah. on, mm -hmm. uh, but utilizing quantum healing hypnosis. Oh my God. It's, it's we're, we're actually, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> we're, we're actually moving you well past the regular hypnosis, uh, state. I mean, well past, uh, theta into the somnambulistic state. And in the somnambulistic state, we're then able to connect with the higher self. Now, Okay, Jason, so what is that? I mean, the higher self is your, your, your oversoul, uh, the, the being who is uh, within you, who is in the spiritual realm. Uh, God has separated his, his wholeness into trillions of pieces, trillions, and, and, and I can't even give you a number, an infinite number of individual particles that inhabit these avatars all over the galaxy in multi-dimensions. So we can connect with our higher self, one of those particles to get understanding, to get healing emotionally and physically. And let me just give you an example. You know, while I'm in, you know, with a client and I am talking to the client and I move them to this somnambulistic state. And once I bring them off the cloud, and once they are then at a point to where we're connected, I'll start to move them to different past lives. And then they'll start to answer, like, where are you? And the first thing we want to know is, where are you? What are you wearing? Do you <laughs> have any your hands? Your hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any hands? Do you have, you know, are you male or female? Yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we figure this out. Some people don't have hands. Some people yeah. say, "Well, I'm, I'm, I'm floating. I'm, I'm, I'm in body. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm. I only see light around me. <laughs> you may have caught them in the spiritual realm, but 
But once you once we're able to get there and we go through all these different um, past lives, we are looking for the connection of the emotional issue that you have in this current state mm -hmm. or the physical issue or whatever the issue is. Can we find it in the past life? Typically, we can or we can get close to it. Oh, but when we move you back out and we call upon the higher self, I mean, uh, I mean the subconscious mind, which you already know. Yes. When we call upon the subconscious mind. We get a clear, distinct intelligence that we're speaking to. It would it 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 would shock some people until they hear it on audio tape because yes. we all we tape it. And when we say, "Well, can we heal Tanya from this trauma, this this depression she's dealing with? Why is she dealing with this?" She knows. Tanya understands that you know they start to talk Here's to like, you like tanya knows but let's remind her <laughs> let's remind her this reality yeah <laughs> so how do how do we help people then and this is to the audience we ask the subconscious mind is it necessary for tanya to experience this in this current lifetime mm -hmm. and they may say no <laughs> and we'll say can you fix it can we help tanya yes and i always like to ask how will you do it? Yeah. And I'm always, and I'm always listening for uh, first person conversation. First person conversation, you're talking to the client. Third person, you're talking to the actual higher self. Exactly. And <laughs> so in that when they say we, that comes through in the voice, you're like, whoa. Exactly. When they say I, okay, we got to get a little deeper. When they start saying we, okay, that's, we, that's where we want you. But you're able then to die, to facilitate. You're able to facilitate uh, an injured foot, uh, a, a depressed uh, situation. And if they can fix it, they will. If they can't fix it, Dolores likes to tell us to say to them, well, Dolores said that you could fix anything <laughs> and that you're powerful and we respect your power. <laughs> I love Dolores. So, I love her too. So, you know, we, 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 we then find out, uh, you know, possibly that you yourself, wanted to go through this particular emotion or this physical trauma here on earth for learning purposes. So it's, it's fascinating how we can utilize different energies uh, from different dimensions to bring forth all types of healing, uh, to answer all types of questions. Um, so it's fascinating. And uh, I know you know what I'm talking about. I totally do. And it's so fun because I've actually done a show on this, how our spirit guides are actually us. It's just us in different frequencies. And so yes. when I, my very first quantum session myself that I did, I had several different personalities of myself come through, but like you said, when that higher self comes through, it is no joke. And I had a friend, we, you know, when we first started doing our quantum healing sessions, we had to practice on one another. And I had a friend uh, do a session on me and <laughs> in the, you know, I wasn't video recording it, but I was audio recording it and you could hear them. He got very um, kind of stuttery because when my higher self came in, he said, it felt as if the energy in the place he felt blasted almost it was like this massive burst of energy came in through me and I was answering questions before he was even asking the questions it was like that you know my higher self was on it it was like okay you know <laughs> we already know listen though ask. what about when Dolores said that the, the one time the energy came into the room when the higher self uh the subconscious mind showed up and there was a lady in the back who had back pain and all of a sudden, the back pains were gone. And that's why she came to the conference. And when this energy, ladies and gentlemen, when this energy comes into the room, it's pure healing energy from different dimensions, uh, something that we cannot totally comprehend. And it is a beautiful, beautiful energy in a beautiful uh, interaction uh, with that le a level of intelligence that's absolutely wonderful. Oh, so true, Jason. It's so true. It's like, not only are we being healed, but everyone around us is being healed as uh, well. Absolutely. <laughs> Fascinating. And I know you probably know being a practitioner, uh, there's times I'm struggling with something and then I attract a client that is too. And then we heal through the session, both of us, whether they know that I'm being healed or not, but I'm like, wow, how fascinating is the law of attraction, you know, when it comes to working 
with quantum healing hypnosis. <laughs> how about how about manifesting it in a meditation, which I'll talk about later, manifesting the client, and then your freaking phone rings about an hour later with a client. Oh. <laughs> I've had that happen several times after meditation, after I asked for, for my higher self to send me a client that I can help. Yes. Yeah. And, and then Crazy. you're like, oh, I guess I needed a little healing too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So Jason, I want to talk about the angelic realms as well. I am very connected with the angelic realms and I know that you are too. I was listening to your story about a book that was guided to you to read about the archangels. And you know, we've kind of been taught in traditional religion that the angels are some guys hanging out with some wings, you know, but that's not, and that they're separate from us, but that's not really the experience that I have had working in the quantum field. I see them as light and sound. And so how do we connect with the archangels? How, what has been your experience with that? Uh, Elizabeth Womack, we all know who she is, the 12 archangels. Uh, that book was astounding to me it was uh, life-changing for me uh all the colors all the different prayers um of connection that you can do uh, uh to connect with the energy of the archangels all the healing prayers within that book um dipping yourself in the gold and purple bath of fire uh to release the depression you know but i've learned from my spiritual guide how to connect with these archangels, obviously we have a guardian angel and we have, we have one at a diagonal angle about, I guess, six to seven feet behind us that that's with us to protect us. Uh -huh. I mean, we have these beings that are around us and I uh, used a meditation that was taught to me on how to connect with my archangels and it's, you know, a breathing technique and you get into your, uh, you know, you get into yourself and you, and you breathe and breathe in and breathe out. And you imagine that you're at the top of the crown chakra and you are walking into an elevator or staircase or whatever you can visualize. And once you get on the staircase, you go all the way down to the heart chakra. And then once you're in the heart chakra, the door open and there's a corridor with a lot of doors on the side with a door at the end. And you're, you're imagining that you're walking down this door and you open that door and it's a beautiful area full of greenery, full of light, birds, and there's a bench. And I have this in my book. It was a bench that, and it's almost like you've read this book already. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> like that. I can kind of hold my hand over some things and, yes. and get information. Yeah. So there's a bench there to your right made of pure light. And you sit there and you, then you invite your angels, your archangel Michael, the you know guardian angels, your spirit guides. Just felt that energy come up behind me. There is no you, joke you know? here right now. <laughs> like, and, yeah. and you invite them to come I'm there. Like, okay. <laughs> and I was taught to say, I am here. I am here to connect. Is there any words of wisdom that you'd like to share with me? I am ready to connect. So you this is a visual. Uh, presentation in your mind of moving from the crown chakra to the heart chakra and channeling uh, I was taught to connect through the heart chakra Yes, and mm -hmm. going through the heart chakra and then moving down the corridor and then opening the door visualizing and then sitting on that white light bench area and then calling on the archangels calling on your spirit guides and then connecting in conversation well, well, Jason, how do you connect? That's how I connect. And I'm quiet and I, and I listen for um, anything that comes to me. Now, people would like, is someone talking to you? I'm not clairaudient. <laughs> However, this, if you listen to the first subtle thing that you can hear, that is just a conscious mind speaking to you, the archangel, the higher self, the spirit God speaking to you. So you have to be quiet and you can hear messages that you've asked or messages that you need to hear. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about remote viewing, but I'm gonna share with you the same concept I use when I'm in remote viewing. But that's how I would suggest 
And you know, there are a lot of different ways. There's never one way in spirituality to do things, but that's how I connect with my archangels, my spirit guides, uh, beings that are here to help us. Um, and, you know, I connect or loved ones. I connect that way. That's beautiful. And that's very different than the way that I connect. So I'm glad that you shared that because like you said, it's all very different. I connect through sound. So I use resonant mm -hmm. tuning with the vowels. So e -a -o -e, yes. and then I speak yes. Hebrew, like -a -e -a -om, -a -a -e -e, e -a -o -e. and then I start seeing symbols in my head, like a Metatron, you know, symbol and different things. So uh, it's very different how we learn how to connect with them. But like I said, just by us talking, I can feel their presence right behind me. Usually I'll feel Michael presents himself usually on my right hand back here, you know, right hand side. And it was just when they walk, it's funny because I've worked with clients before and they're one girl's hair went, and I was like, <laughs> oh, like, you know, when they come into the room, it's very palpable and you can really feel that. And so I love, you know, like you said, just go explore your own way of connecting yes. with the angelics because that's that's your way, right? That's your way. And that's what you're, what you're saying. You know, and you know, I, I don't want to say I'm weary of people, but when a person, you know, sometimes when a person says I connect the same way, uh, everybody has a different yeah. way. Not that you can't connect in a similar way, but everybody is not, can't connect through sound. You know, they just, I mean, they, you can't before I would say really be who you are, whoever, this resonates with be who you are and be truthful about the way you experience because it's unique and it's beautiful it really is and uh, you know some people will see they'll see the energy come in and it's really just where your inner abilities are and you know yeah. which ones are fine-tuned i'm very yeah. clairsentient like you jason so i feel yes. them it's like i feel them before i even have any other you know <laughs> but how about elizabeth woman oh my god she is such a you know, when I was reading her book, I was like, oh my God. And then I started to search and try to find her. When I saw one of her interviews, she looked like pure light to me. Yes. Pure energy. I was just amazed that she is a beautiful soul. I love her. So beautiful. <laughs> and so let's switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about remote viewing because that's something yes. that you and I uh, obviously uh, utilize. I, I don't yes. use, utilize it as much, but I have in the past, I've done several shows and done several different remote viewing targets, but uh, can you share a little bit about maybe a fun target that you remote viewed? Uh, well, you know, I remote viewed Skinwalker Ranch and oh, you know, I was fascinated. So my teacher, Tony Civilelli, uh, remote view uh, us and Tony. Um, Tony and I have done several sessions, and we've done we've done four shows over remote viewing. But we we did uh, Skinwalker Ranch, and Tony took obviously. Uh, Tony gave me uh, the uh, coordinate, um, and uh, then you know I you know I drew the ideogram, um, and once I drew the ideogram I, with the hand, I just let it go, and then I and, and I don't use the tip of the pen. I use my my my, my fingers, and I just touch the ideogram and I got all these, you know, light, uh, horizontal, um, you know, uh, energy, you know, all the different uh, characteristics of what we were looking for. So we went through that in phase one and, you know, and came back in phase two, you know, long, uh, hot, cold, you know, all that stuff, uh, just getting all the characteristics down in my head. And in phase three, I came up with some sketches, uh, what I thought, you know, I was, I was feeling and what I was actually seeing because sometimes I can touch it and I can feel sometimes. And when I touch the ideogram, I can see. Very okay. So I, then I came up with, you know, um, you know, everything was, you know, more of energy, uh, radiation, uh, you know, uh, something's there in a room that has radiation symbols on it. Ooh. Uh, and I had these big tubular, I don't know what they were, but just these big, huge tubes up under uh, underground underneath the ranch. And then I had uh, a tower. So we had to go to phase four. And this is scientific remote viewing. I'm an associate remote viewer also. So I know there are different yes. techniques. So in scientific remote viewing, we go to, we go to uh, phase four. And then we start to narrow down, um, uh, move 50 feet, move 100 feet. Tell me what you see. 
you know, just start to narrow down more and more. So I started to put all these different characteristics and all of my, all my different um, uh, horizontal, I mean, uh, yeah, horizontal uh, um, categories. And then once I finished this session and I recorded it, I put all of my work in the book. I came to the conclusion that I saw these big tubular um, um, tunnels underground was just that. They were huge tubular tunnels. And at the end of one of them was this huge room full of aircrafts, uh, not planes, but just different crafts. Okay. And there were humanoid type people in this facility underground. Uh, there were huge vents and there was a, there was a, a room that was full of, I, I, it looked like nuclear type weapons or some type of installation there. Mm -hmm. So that was a cool one. So these tubes are man-made, not organic. I couldn't, couldn't I smell? couldn't. I, I didn't, uh, well, actually I can't, uh, they were, they were man-made. They were man-made tubes underground. And, and I don't know if it was an alien base or, uh, or, or a U.S. base, but the crafts were not airplanes as we know them. They were different type crafts. Um, you know, and I don't know if it was Those a It's got to be pretty big if it's fitting craft uh, in there. Huge. It was a huge facility and it was running water. I kept seeing water underground that was running. Hmm. So I thought that was a pretty cool one. And I had another. Uh, my spiritual guide called me and she says, Jason, I have a client. She is frantic. She cannot find her dog. Now she connects with animals. Uh, Chloe Moores. She's a, she, she, she communicates with animals. She's an outstanding channeler. Uh, so she connected with the dog and she felt that the dog was scared and she knew it. She says, Jason, your remote viewing skills, you can find it. I said, okay, uh, call your client and let her know I'm a call. So I called the client. I said, I need for you to get a picture of this dog. And I need for you to assign a number, four digit number to the dog. Okay. And I didn't use remote viewing. I used associate remote, remote viewing, but I used a, a, a targeting type of associate remote viewing that helps you find things in quadrants. You just do, you draw your line and then you put uh, A, B, C, D, and then you, you, you start to, you know, pick out where the, the location is, you, you know, you, you narrow it down, you narrow it down. So she gave, she did all that. She said, she did a picture of the dog. She sent me all that. She sent me the numbers and I started working on it. And I kept coming up with, as I was going through my session, uh, associate remote viewing session, I kept going through and I noticed power line. I drew a lake and I drew a park area with people sitting out at a picnic and I drew a tree and I drew a, some sort of barrier right by the tree. And I kept saying, hmm, the dog is right by the tree. He's sitting there by the tree. And I called Tony Civilelli, who's my remote viewing instructor. And I said, Tony, can you help me with this? I gave him the coordinates and he's like, uh, this dog is somewhere by a tree and it's an open area. A lot of people there with power lines. I said, Tony, I got the same thing. <laughs> Call this lady late that night and gave her all my information. They found that, not late that night, late that evening. They found that dog down the road. She said, what you just drew, Jason, was a park right down the street from our house. So he went there. It was not at the park. It was a little bit down the road, but guess where it was? Where? It was stuck under a fence right next to a tree. Oh. And they found the dog. And she called me. She tried to pay me. I said, no, no, I'm okay. I, I, but I'm, you know, I'm here in Texas and you guys are in Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that dog was under a tree, stuck, right? I mean, under the fence, stuck right next to a tree. I thought he was like resting by the tree. Out, yeah. But he was right there by the fence that I drew right by the tree. So that, those are two cool ones. That is such a cool, Do you have any? cool story. <laughs> those are examples of what we can do with remote viewing. I, I was on Jessica Jones's show, Remote Viewing Investigations, and we remote viewed the Dark Pyramid in Alaska. And Ooh. when I sat down to do it, it it bounced me out. They bounced me out. Those who were yeah. in there, they're like, no, no, no. So I waited for about 12 to 24 hours. I can't remember, but then I was able to, to re-enter a different way. But it's kind of funny because 
we we found a lot of really neat information just remote viewing that and we also remote viewed the Salem witch trials as well so it's really fun when you can take it to you, you know, you can take it to a, a galactic level or you can take it to, I want to help find your dog level. You know, that's the neat thing about remote viewing. <laughs> yeah. That you know, moving your consciousness and using your intuitive ability abilities is, it's really fabulous. And, and, and it really helps, you know, the way I really, really got to the level that I am with remote viewing, I credit a lot of it to transcendental meditation. Yeah. Um, Dr. Courtney Brown is one of the, the I don't want to say godfathers, I'm going to say grand, uh, but god lady, god ladies of scientific remote viewing. And Courtney Brown's book is absolutely fabulous. And that's sort of how my uh, instructor learned through uh, Courtney and some of the um, uh, other uh, top guys out there. But um, transcendental meditation was huge if you were already a remote viewer. And the ability to calm your body for 20 minutes and just to be at peace and to reach a level of transcendence, meaning that if you're at the top of the water, you know, you hear the waves, and then when you move down, you hear bloop, 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 you can hear the bubbles. And once you move further down into this ocean, this vast ocean, you experience a, a, a level of quiet, a level of peace. So when I'm remote viewing, I'm, when, I, when, I, when I'm preparing and I, I can get there quickly, this level of peace, this, this quiet, this stillness. And like we were taught, the first, when you hit, when you touch, uh, the first low lying piece of information that comes to you, typically it's the one. And I was really good at suppressing my conscious mind. Yeah, the and set aside technique, my, you know, moving everything over. Yeah. And allowing the subconscious mind to give me the answers. And when I started working with him, he was like, man, you're picking these uh, targets out quick. You know, <laughs> and, but, but I noticed that it was because I had primed myself with meditation uh, to really, really help. Now, I use uh, associate remote viewing. I learned that from a guy named David Wallace. He's a top psychic in Hawaii. Uh -huh. uh, He's David Wallace is uh, a guy that you see on, in, uh, on the YouTube a lot with, uh, uh, you know, he uses it to uh, predict future outcomes. Oh, wow. With, with all kinds of sporting events. So we use pictures. We use 10 photos, you know, maybe a set of 100, but 10 photos. And we move them around. And we pick out, show me if the game will be over or under. The Chicago Bears versus Dallas Cowboys play <laughs> on, on December the 2nd, 2023. If this is the right, if this is over, let me know. Put that one down. Then take this one, do the same thing, put that one down. And then we go into a meditation <laughs> and we come out of it. And then we start to, you know, write what we feel in the description line. And then we will then rub our hands over the paper and then draw a sketch on both sides on what we think it is and it will open the envelopes and if it matches we're at 100 percent. and if we don't we have to go through a formula that russell Tark created and you go through this formula and if you're if you're more than 3.5 it's a yes if you're under you know what i'm talking about if you're yeah, under people yeah. no so i've done this i have a <laughs> almost a 45 percent, 40 percent hit rate on nba games that's great and then so you I might did be that. a bookie, right? No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> but I have a few of my sessions in the book, and um, I've learned I learned that AVR, um, uh, ARV uh, technique, and uh, I, I use it a lot. I use it in business. Yeah. Uh, I have people call me to ask me, "Hey, should I do this deal?" Well, wait a minute. Give me the details. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do this. Do this real quick. So it's faster than scientific remote viewing, and I also try to back everything I do. I back it up with the sway test. Yes, see, or a pendulum you know, it, or muscle testing. I do that exactly. too. Exactly. Uh -huh. I try to back it up to see if it matches. Yes. Sometimes I get in trouble, but you know. Yeah, and there's no doubt in my mind, Jason, that you and I have, this isn't our first rodeo doing remote viewing. I right. picked it up very quickly too. And I think it's something we obviously were very good at in past lives. And so I was taking my classes with a friend and she's like, how are you getting all these targets? And I, they were coming to me very rapidly, you know, and I was actually surprised at how quickly they were coming. But I do feel that this is probably some sort of an, an inner ability that is 
in our subconscious that we have now brought forward to our conscious mind. Exactly. And we're exactly. pretty good at it, right? And it's fun. I have a great time doing it. And it's so, fun. Jason, I want to talk about your book. Okay. I want to talk about your book, Empowered by Consciousness. And so, you know, what do you mean when you say empowered by consciousness? I mean, I can have a probably a good understanding, but I'd love to hear, you know, hear it from you. Well, our, I'm empowered. Everything I do is because I use my consciousness. Every modality that I've set forth to learn is because of my conscious abilities and I, and I know how to tap into my subconscious mind. And it helps me uh, to achieve things. It helps me to reset my uh, mindset. It helps me to reprogram my thoughts. I'm empowered by this beautiful thing we call consciousness. You know, and I set forth a, a number of um, objectives when I was writing this book. And primarily I wanted to recount my spiritual journey and I wanted to, you know, share the wisdom that I had and uh, allow other people to, you know, follow uh, everything I was trying to do. Not as something that's, that's just, you know, well, this is just your thing. No, I wanted it to be looked at as a resource. I want the book to be looked at as uh, some sort of a database where people can go to say, okay, this spiritual modality right here. Okay, but now he's talking about the uh, he's talking about uh, channeling, which is that's one of the chapters in my book. But I don't just say, well, you know, I was well, one day I was meeting with my you know uh, channeling instructor, and she showed me how. No, I go into I go in depth. I give very uh, critical history and detail about how channeling has been used over the years. Uh, different scholars who have talked about it, scientific study and research. And then I go into my story on my experiences and then I teach you in the book on how you can achieve it. Uh, so Empowered by Consciousness, you know, it, I, I envision the book as sort of a compass uh, for people who are yearning to venture beyond, you know, conventional, the yeah. <laughs> you know, the unknown conventional boundaries that we have here uh, while we're incarnated on this earth and uh, boundaries of religion uh, practices, uh, boundaries of, you know, your mom and dad's beliefs and to learn and to open your mind. I challenge you to open your mind and to experience different things that can actually help, help you develop and grow your mindset, change your life in any way you'd like. And Power by Consciousness, it's, 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 it's deep. It's, it's a, it talks about a lot of different modalities and, you know, um, it's an open invitation for, I mean, to all readers uh, who'd like to uh, bolster um, you know, anything they like to bolster. Yeah. And I think it's, it's fun. I think as we begin to expand our consciousness, we become more open to these mm -hmm. different modalities. And, you know, sometimes we advance out of modalities, but then we take it to a new level. Like for example, one of the first modalities I learned was EFT tapping. And now I incorporate that in my quantum healing hypnosis sessions. And I'm sure you do that too. I use channeling. I, I use light language, <laughs> a variety of things. And I'm like, you know, I was just, you, you know, it was like, I had these building blocks of all these modalities. And now the neat thing is you can incorporate them in the quantum. We, you've taken the words right out of my mouth. I, out of my mind, actually, I use a number of modalities uh, and we, and I merge some of them to help clients. Mm -hmm. I merge some of them to achieve things that I want to achieve, you know, so taking different ones, like say for instance, um, quantum healing hypnosis. Okay. You can use that. And people use it for, you know, uh, different things like, uh, you know, healing or uh, mental right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, well, wait a minute, we can use it for weight loss. You can use it for sports hypnosis. You can use quantum healing hypnosis for a number of things. Mm -hmm. You can use it in remote viewing. So I'm like, man, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, are very much interchangeable. And I'm glad you said that because I yeah. do the same. Oh, you thing. can use it in remote viewing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's limitless, right? And I think that's the neat thing about it is it's absolutely limitless. And the, you know, I think when I started learning quantum healing hypnosis, we can actually do it on ourselves. Like once you get to a master level, I think that's where that transcendental meditation comes in is we can, I have visually seen myself shift timelines in a quantum healing hypnosis session I did on myself. And it was drastic because the next day, my friends didn't even recognize who I was. I had embodied more aspects of my higher self. And it was like, I, I've even done a show on this. I called it 
walk, like a walk-in came in during my awakening. It was like totally different version of me, but I know that it was more, I was embodying more of my higher self. And, uh, it's so fascinating what we can do. I mean, and I feel like we're just barely touching the surface when it comes to working in the quantum field. <laughs> we're barely touching the surface. And, you know, I, you know, I want empowered by consciousness to, to serve as, you know, a spiritual, uh, lantern or beacon, you know, to help people open their eyes on forgotten pathways, you know, so that they can, you know, it can help them inspire uh, themselves to do much more. Don't be afraid of what we are. We are made of light and sound. We are multidimensional beings. And that's what we are. We're inhabiting these avatars and we are experiencing this lifetime. Our higher self is, just, is experiencing several different lifetimes at the same time. <laughs> and this, this happens to be one of them. So, you know, explore, you know, it's a profound experience, um, you know, uh, awakening, a powerful awakening of truth and manifestation. Absolutely. And so, Jason, where can people find your book? Well, you can find the book right now. Um, it, you know, you can actually uh, go to my website. The book is not out yet. October the 10th. And I'm going to send you one too. October the 10th will be the launch date, but you can go to www.jasonmedlock.com, sign up, and I will, uh, you know, get you out information as the book is ready to come out. We're right now, we're in the final stages of uh, formatting and book cover. So, I mean, we're done writing the book. I'm done writing the book. I've had so many people look at that doggone book uh, calling you <laughs> edit and take that out. No, this is not. Hey, leave my book alone. Okay. Like, this is you my know, channeled message. Leave my book alone. Leave it alone. But yes, it'll be out October the 10th, www.jasonmedlock.com and Powered by Consciousness. That's great. And so Jason, yeah. you just want to share briefly some of the services that you provide. Well, I'm a mindset coach. Um, obviously. Uh, so I am a quantum healing hypnosis uh, uh, a technician. Um, and I have within quantum healing, I also offer regular hypnosis for people who don't want to, you know, go to that price point. Um, you know, uh, re citizen reentry, you know, people that are that are reentering uh, citizenship from being jailed, they need a mindset shift and, you know, they need to reprogram their mind, you know, weight loss, uh, sports hypnosis, business success, academic success. People don't realize you can, if you're smart, you can become smarter. <laughs> yeah. And if you're a good athlete, you can become a better athlete, you right? You can become a better athlete. It's all about our mind. And what I've done is I've said, you know what? I'm going to create a mindset boot camp. So I created a seven day, uh, 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 immersive, intensive program. Uh, day one, you got, you know, hypnosis, visualization, visualization sessions, uh, these exercises to do day two, day three, day four, day five. So it's a seven day boot camp that I've created. Um, it's not ready yet, but it will be out in here in the next uh, few weeks. And I'm also in the process of creating a 12 week program um, so that people can log on and they can do a 12 week course on actually getting out of this rut and changing their mindset to be whoever it is or attain whatever it is they want to attain. Now, if you want to work with me personally, and, and just like, you know, when you work with us personally, it costs a little bit more. You know, that's why I'm creating these, these courses. So it's yeah. more, much more manageable because when I have to personally work with someone, which I don't mind, yeah, we have to, you know, well, it's an energy. Like, Tanya, we have to get, yeah. yeah it yeah. Jason, it's funny you say that because I just posted a few days ago that I'm being guided to work in larger groups as well as courses, because mm -hmm. I think it's uh, if we are trying to reach the masses, it's really tough doing one on one sessions. It's going to take us a lot longer to get there. And so I think as a collective, as we're beginning to uh, embrace this aspect of assisting in the healing and the raising of the frequency of the planet, you know, we're being guided to reach the masses. And I think courses is a great way to do that. And I myself am starting to look into ways to do that too. Do that. Do, you know, you, you, you have your platform, you know, exactly what you're doing. You, 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 I mean, I'm listening to you. So you're at a level, a high level, you know what you're doing and just create your course and don't even think about it. Just do it. And just, that's kind of how I say, you know what, I'm going to create a course. Secondly, one-on-one -on -one coaching, love it. But I saw where, man, 
I don't have enough time in the day to do anything. This yeah. get, it gets to be too much. Mm -hmm. And you have to create the courses for uh, people. Um, and they're much more affordable than hiring us one-on-one. -on -one, I can tell you that. Yeah. And they can do it on their own time, whether whatever country they live in, they can download that course and, and, you know, learn. And uh, I think you're right. We are learning how to expend our energy in a way that will reach, you know, more people that's not draining and burning us out. <laughs> you know, at least that's been my experience. So but I want to tell people also, if you don't mind, um, the expansion of consciousness, I'm moving into season four. Um, we we'll, we start uh, somewhere around October ish. I'll be on, but I won't be having any guests. I'll be on kind of promoting the book, but we start in October. I did, and I'm like, you know, I was burned out a little bit. I did about 50 something shows from uh, <laughs> April. Uh, until July. And I said, Oh, I didn't take a break. I hear you. It can, <laughs> and I think once you put the energy out there, I was getting so many guests, it was like overwhelming. And I'm right there with you, Jason, I'm taking a little break from the guest shows. You're my last guest show for at least for September, I'm going to take a breather. And uh, I think once you put that out there in the law of attraction, the universe is like, Oh, you want to be a host? Here you go. Here's a whole bunch yes. of guests. And I was, I was uh, speaking to my spiritual guide, you know, she taught me how to channel and she taught me a lot of different things. And she told me, and I, oh yeah, also in the book, I have several, well, I don't have several, I have a, I have two sessions that one session is, um, I was a woman in the back of a wagon and, and looked like in the Western time, I was a white, uh, uh woman, I had red hair. And I was giving birth uh, to a <laughs> child on the back of a wagon. Uh, and I talk about that. That sounds very outlander a, to me. In, 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 in a Dolores Cannon style, you know, therapist, you know, subject, therapist, subject. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's the transcript of one of my sessions. And then the other one, there's uh, myself and I'm speaking with the collective. And they're giving all this, you know, high end information. I can't remember it all. But it, that was the real cool part of the book as well that people will find uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, that's really neat. And you never know what's going to come through in the sessions. I've even had people, I had a client say, I want to connect with my dragon. And I said, okay, I didn't <laughs> even know I had a dragon, but evidently my dragon and his dragon, we received messages through that. So don't limit yourself on, you know, what you can actually explore when it comes to the subconscious mind, because it can be as small as a grain of sand. You know, you were a grain of sand. You, we are a grain of sand. We're all connected, right? <laughs> Up to your dragon, you know? I mean, so that's the fun part of it is it can, I feel like I'm going on an adventure every time I do a quantum healing hypnosis session for someone, which is so fun. <laughs> you know, as, as a, I'm a Billy Carson fan, as he likes yes, to say. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. He likes to call it Christ consciousness. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, and it's a, a, a huge a consciousness web of connected individuals in the ether, in the vastness of the universe. And once we have a thought that leaves our 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 our, our minds, it moves in a light way, light thoughts in speed of light, and it is light into the um, consciousness, the Christ consciousness, and it's commingling right there. And then, when you raise yourself to a certain frequency then you download all kinds of thoughts that are there. That's how people get information, inventions, uh, ideas that come up. We don't have our conscience uh, right here local. Our conscience is not local. Our conscience is being beamed in from another location. So I just find, you know, consciousness and, uh, and, and all the things that surround it, I mean, just absolutely incredible. And once a person um, can slow down, and remove themselves from the matrix yes. <laughs> and start to focus more from within, you'll find out a whole lot about yourself. That's so true. And I think that's a beautiful piece of advice to end the show, Jason. And so I thank you so much for coming on. I thank you for sharing your story. I think this was fascinating. All of the different things that we touched on in the show, these are things that light me up. They bring me joy. I really enjoy these types of conversa conversations. So Thank you for spending time with us today on the show. I really appreciate it. And I know that the listeners will too. Thank you so much. 
You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.theexistentialempath.com.